read up the beginning dates and the end dates of the writing of the Bible. So when Genesis was wrote, that was about what year and then when Revelation was wrote, that's about one year. You had a number long ago, but I'm really good to hear. BC, and then how many? 
God is good. All the time. And all the time. Absolutely. want to welcome everybody here tonight. Glad everybody is here. Uh, if you didn't know what, what was happening just a few moments ago, that's Pew Packers. And I think everybody can learn uh, those uh, good Bible basics uh, that we often forget. How many of you have learned all 66 books of the Bible just in the few weeks we've been doing that? Most people have. Probably heard some you hadn't heard before. But we're glad everybody's here. We want to share some announcements with you tonight as we get started. Uh, let's see. If you are in need of a nursery, uh, we have one provided um, for infants up to the age of three. Uh, again, thank you for all the help for Vacation Bible School. Uh, a lot of hard work went into that. Uh, not only set up and clean up, but also every night, uh, Sunday through Wednesday, we had a good time. Uh, Operation Christmas Joy uh, is underway and would encourage you, if you want to, pick up a pack that's on the table in the foyer. Uh, some of those guidelines have changed, and all those boxes are due back on October the 11th. Uh, also, if you have not already done so, please fill out one of the Focus on the Family Sheets. Uh, and you can put that on Shanna's desk, and you might just be the lucky uh, spotlight church member in the bulletin uh, next week. So please remember uh, that. I uh, want to congratulate uh, Ethan Wilson and his family. He was drafted in the second round to go to the Philadelphia Phillies. understand he's now in Clearwater, Florida for a few weeks uh, before he gets moved somewhere else. But remember him, uh, big time change, and uh, he's living the dream for sure. Uh, but he's, uh, he's ready to get to work, and that's exactly what they're going to do uh, with him, but congratulations uh, to him. All right, um, y'all didn't write down who's doing what. All I know is going to happen tonight is Jay's leading singing and I'm preaching. I don't know who's got the first prayer. Who's got the first prayer? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. Richard, uh, Carl's got it. Closing prayer. Richie. All right. Hey, that's the way that works right there. That's good stuff. All right. We're, again, we're glad everybody is here. Uh, go ahead and uh, get ready to sing. We're going to turn it over to Jay as we begin our worship. First song, number 855, God's Family. 855. <clears throat> We're part of the family that's been born again, part of the family whose love knows no end, for Jesus has saved us and made us
been there and done that. Just turn it over to Jay and Richard and Scott. So we got a few on our prayer list that we need to remember uh, before we go into prayer. First of all, our sympathy is extended to Kenan. And uh, if there's anything we can do, let us know, Kenan. Dennis Island fell recently and has <coughs> fractured his pelvis. Shirley Spivey fell at home, but she is doing better. And uh, Linda Clarkson have been battling a UTI for a while. And I know there's others that we have not mentioned that you know of, so let's remember them in our prayers, visits, cards, whatever we can to encourage and strengthen them. Will you pray with me? Our Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful Lord's Day, for the blessings that you grant us to allowing us to wake up this morning and to see this beautiful day. Each day that you make, God, is a new creation, is a new thing in this world. Father, we thank you for your love and for your mercy and your grace, but especially, Father, we thank you for your Son, for the life that he lived on this earth, for the examples that he gave, for the teachings that he gave, and for the tremendous sacrifice that he gave. We know we're not worthy of anything that you grant us, Father, and we just pray that you forgive us of our sins and give us the strength to overcome the temptations that we face each and every day. God, we pray that we will look around us and see those that are hurting, those that are needing our help, and that we will always be willing to make the time as we should to assist and to help those, Father. Father, we pray at this time for those who are sick and afflicted, for Linda, Father. We pray for her and for Shirley and for Dennis, Father. And We know there are many others. We just pray that you ease their pains and restore them to their health. And we pray for Kenan, Father, and the family, and we pray that you would comfort and strengthen them during this time. God, we pray for those that are serving in the military, those that are away from home. We pray that you will protect them, that you will be with their families back here and grant them peace of mind, and that you will bring them home shortly. God, we pray that we will always look for avenues and opportunities to serve you as we walk this life. And we pray, Father, that you will give us the words to say and the things to do during those times. God, go with us now throughout this day and through this life. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our song of encouragement will be number 211, Heart the Gentle Voice. If you uh, use your songbook, you may want to place your marker there. Our song before the lesson 244. Let's stand while we sing together. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Time is filled with swift transition.
Y'all keep them held up high. Brother Charles, if you're looking for your Bible, I'm not going to tell you, but somebody swiped it from you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll be limping later, I'm sure. Have a bruise on my arm or something. Y'all go ahead and turn in your Bibles to uh, Genesis chapter 9. Uh, Genesis chapter number 9. Uh, during the course of Vacation Bible School this past week, uh, we had the privilege of studying about the flood. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, the world that Noah lived in. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, the man himself, Noah. Uh, we talked about uh, uh, the flood and the ark and the animals and, and all of those great things. And I was thinking about, what about the rainbow? At uh, the very end of all of that, we uh, read about uh, the covenant that God made with um, with Noah and uh, that rainbow just is a great great reminder so let's consider tonight the the rainbow in in the clouds I think there's a song in there about a rainbow in the clouds that's a great song but let's begin tonight Genesis chapter 9 beginning in verse uh, number 12 God said this is the sign of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations I set my rainbow in the cloud and it shall be for the sign of the covenant between me and the earth it shall be when I bring a cloud over the earth uh, that the rainbow shall be in the cloud and I will remember my covenant which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh the rainbow shall be in the cloud and I will look on it to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. This scripture really takes us again all the way back to Noah. And you remember that after, after the flood, God promised to, that he would never, never destroy uh, the world uh, again with, with water. We, we know that he sealed that promise with this uh, rainbow making uh, that covenant. Now, I'm sure that we all at some time have seen uh, a rainbow. In fact, uh, one of our Facebook pages, I don't remember if it's public page or the private page, but the, the picture of the church has got a nice big rainbow in the background. Beautiful. And you've seen them. They're, they're absolutely uh, gorgeous uh, uh, to watch. Anybody ever seen a double rainbow? That's pretty neat, isn't it? I mean, I don't even know how that begins to work, but that's pretty cool. But a rainbow, you know, is an optical and a meteorological phenomenon where, where a spectrum of light is uh, appearing in the sky because the sun is shining through uh, the rain or the moisture uh, that is in the air. And again, they are uh, very, very beautiful. Well, God told Noah that this rainbow would be in the cloud. And... Uh, I think in our lives, uh, there, there are some, some rainbows uh, mixed in with the clouds. And we're going we're gonna to talk about some of that uh, tonight in our lesson. But this rainbow is a symbol of God's divine presence. God's divine presence. Revelation chapter 4 verse 3 says, There was a rainbow around the throne. A rainbow around the throne. So whenever Noah would, would see a rainbow, he would remember uh, God, that God was always there. Revelation chapter 10, verse 1 says, I saw still another mighty angel coming down from heaven, clothed with a cloud. And it says a rainbow was on his head. So I believe the rainbow helps us to remember uh, God's divine presence. God was with Noah all during uh, the flood. In the very beginning, before it even started raining, as Noah was building that ark and, and preparing himself for what God had told him was going to happen, all the way through this flood, God was, was always there. And God will always be there. He's made the promise, I'll never forsake you. I'll never leave you. I'll never abandon you. Well, this rainbow is also a symbol of God's mercy. And Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 4, that God is rich. In mercy, God is rich in mercy, and and His mercy uh, leads to Him being a forgiving God. In fact, in Psalm 103, verse 17, the Bible says that that God's mercy is from everlasting to everlasting. So that's important for us to know. Also, uh, the rainbow is a, a sign of of hope, a symbol of hope. And this is really important as well because 
a lot of people are asking, even currently, even, even today, is there any, any hope? You know, we look around the world and see all the situations and uh, the national news and the local news, and, and we experience all of these bad things that happen to us in life, and sometimes we begin to question, is there any hope? And the answer is yes. Yes, there is hope, and his name is Jesus. Jesus is our hope, 1 Timothy 1, verse 1. And so this hope is powerful because we are saved by hope, Romans 8 and verse 24. But I think also when we think about this rainbow, the rainbow in the cloud, uh, the rainbow is a symbol of the unchanging nature of, of God's will. God's will will never change. God, God's word uh, does not change. It is forever. It is eternal. And it does not uh, change. As Peter tells us in 1 Peter 1 verse 25. It does not uh, change. It does not fade away. It won't ever be destroyed. So this, this rainbow uh, that was a promise to Noah that the earth would, would never again be destroyed with water uh, is powerful for us even, even tonight. Because it's uh, significant that the rainbow symbolized God's judgment. God's judgment on the earth. Noah saw that rainbow and, and he saw that rainbow after God destroyed the earth with that flood. So every time that you and I see a rainbow, we need to remember that God uh, will destroy the world. But next time it won't be with water, will it? Next time it's going to be with fire going to be with fire, Peter says in 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 10. But something interesting there in our text in Genesis chapter uh, number 9. It says the rainbow comes out of the cloud. Guess what? You won't have a rainbow without storm clouds, without moisture being in the air. I mean, think about uh, just earlier today it rained. Dark purple clouds. You could hear, hear the thunder. It stormed yesterday. But beyond that and further up in the sky, what, what is still shining? The sun, absolutely. Even though we may not be able to see the sun shining because of the clouds and the rain and the storm that's happening, we know the sun is still shining. And that sun shines through uh, the rain and the storms, and it can and does produce some beautiful, beautiful rainbows. Back there in Genesis chapter 9, verse 16 says, The rainbow shall be in the cloud. And I will look on it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of flesh that is on the earth. Clouds come into our lives. We all have clouds of a lot of different kinds uh, in our lives. Maybe, maybe tonight it's the cloud of, of guilt. Cloud of guilt. There was a, a, a man who sent a check into the, uh, the IRS, the Internal Revenue uh, Service. His conscience had been bothering him uh, for quite some time. He felt guilty. Why did he feel guilty? Well, he had been cheating on his taxes. And he included a brief note confessing his wrong to the IRS. And this is what it said. He, he, he said in his amendment to his little note, he said, if I still can't sleep at night, I'll send you the rest. <laughs> I'll send you the rest. That was funny. I like that. But guilt. Guilt is uh, something that, that caused the Jews on, on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2 uh, to, to ask the question, what shall we do? They'd been pricked in their heart. They had been cut to the heart. They, they knew that they were guilty of what Peter had told them they had done. That is crucified the Lord Jesus Christ. And so out of guilt, uh, they, they asked the question, what, what, what shall we do? Acts chapter 2 and verse number 37. But may, maybe it's the cloud of sorrow. There's a lot of sorrow in uh, our immediate area, in our community, in our uh, city. You know, a lot of people who are uh, suffering right now and going through a lot of very painful uh, situations. I would con continue to encourage you to be, be mindful of them uh, as they are grieving the loss of uh, young children or adult children killed in car accidents or people who are uh, dying from uh, COVID-19 or from whatever the illness may be. There's a lot of sorrow and tragedy. Reminds me of Job chapter 14, verse 1, where the Bible says, Man who is born of woman is a few days and full of trouble. Full of trouble. 
There is so much when you turn on the news. I don't, we don't hardly ever watch the news, but if you do, you can turn on uh, the news and you can see and, and hear the reports of all the pain and the war, even the hunger, the, the disease, and, and the domestic trouble, um, even the misrepresentation and the, and, and the fake and false news causes uh, a lot of pain and heartache. Uh, criticism. You've been criticized lately? Mm-hmm. You yeah. have. We all get criticized every once in a while. I'm actually working on uh, two lessons. How to give criticism and how to receive criticism. Kind of an interesting thought there. But anyway, there's hundreds of things in this life uh, that will cause sorrow. And so maybe you have clouds of, of sorrow and uh, turmoil uh, hanging, hanging over your life. But then there's the cloud of bereavement. Again, there are a lot of people, a lot of families who are uh, hurting. Uh, you, you hear about them, and sometimes they have a church family, and sometimes uh, they don't. But we need to encourage them and rally around them. Because the, the death of a loved one, whether it's expected or whether it's very sudden, is, is very, very challenging. David wept when his son Absalom died in 2 Samuel 18 and verse 33. Uh, the church made great lamentation. Remember Stephen's death? Stephen preached the gospel, and he was, he was stoned to death, and the church was just in a very, very sad state in Acts chapter 8. What about Lazarus? Maybe one of the great examples of uh, groaning and weeping and uh, going through the, the bereaving process is Jesus himself. When, when Lazarus died, the scripture says in John eleven thirty three 33 that Jesus groaned within himself. And then the shortest uh, scripture in the New Testament, John chapter 11, verse 35. This is actually probably one that people, when they are asked to quote or memorize a scripture, that's the one they volunteer for. I'll take John eleven thirty-five. 35. You know John eleven thirty-five. 35. Two words. Jesus wept. But oh, there are some lessons in those two words. Jesus wept. But when we think about the cloud of bereavement, we need, I, I want to challenge you that, that in those times when you are uh, with someone who is grieving, uh, there are no words. There really are no words that you can, you can adequately say that would help ease their pain. Most of the time, the very best thing we can do is just simply to be there. To be there with them and to cry and to be the shoulder that they need, a hug, to, to let them know that they're not alone, uh, that they, they have uh, family and friends. Uh, to help them during this time and it's not just in that immediate time when the loss happens it's in the days and weeks and months uh, that will lie ahead for them but may, maybe the cloud of uh, cross bearing you know life itself is is challenging and the apostle Paul lived under this cloud of uh, bearing his cross for the church and for his fellow Christians in fact if you'll turn in your Bibles to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 I want you to hear uh, how Paul describes this cloud uh, of uh, cross-bearing and living his life for the glory of God and for the betterment of the church. L listen to what he suffered under this cloud of bearing his cross, living his life. 2 Corinthians chapter 11, beginning in verse number uh, 24. Paul writes, From the Jews, five times I received 40 stripes minus one. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was stoned, three times I was shipwrecked, a night and a day I have spent in the deep. In journeys often, in perils of water, in perils of robbers, in perils or in danger of my own countrymen, in perils of the Gentiles, in perils in the city, in perils in the wilderness, in perils in the sea, in perils among false brethren. He was just in danger everywhere he turned, everywhere he went. Verse 27, in weariness and toil. In sleeplessness often, in hunger and thirst, in fastings often, in cold and nakedness. Besides the other things, what comes upon me daily, my deep concern for all the churches. The cloud of bearing uh, your cross, living your life for uh, the glory of God. Paul knew what it really meant to take up his cross and follow Jesus, just like Jesus said in Matthew 16 and verse number 24. There are a lot of clouds uh, that come into uh, our lives. But I want to get back to this uh, uh, rainbow. The rainbow is a symbol of pardon. 
pardon. You see, outside the cloud of guilt, there is this rainbow of pardon or forgiveness. And I'm glad to know tonight that the God we serve is a God who is uh, abundantly ready to pardon and forgive. Isaiah chapter 55, verses 6 and 7, God, God stands more than willing and able to, to pardon and forgive our sins. Uh, David, David sinned by committing adultery. And then what did he do? You remember? With Bathsheba, he, he uh, had and conspired to have her husband, Uriah the Hittite, uh, put to death and murdered. But when he was confronted by the prophet Nathan, uh, David explained and exclaimed, he said, I have sinned. I have sinned. And Nathan then told David that the Lord had put away his, his sin. Uh, 2 Samuel 12 and about verse 13. So when we think about uh, sin, we need to know that we, we do live under this cloud of guilt because we're guilty of sin. But we also need to remember that God wants to and can forgive. He wants to forgive. And he has the power to forgive us. And when God forgives our sins, he removes our sins as far as the east is from the west. How far is the east from the west, by the way? Do the east and the west ever touch? You can go as far east as you want to and you'll never be going west. You can go as far west as you want to and you'll never end up going east. That's something to think about there in Psalm 103, verse 12. Removing our sins as far as the east is from the west. When we are willing to surrender to God's terms of forgiveness, to have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, to repent and turn, to turn from our sins and to turn to God, uh, confessing our faith in Christ, uh, being baptized, having our sins washed away in baptism, uh, God will forgive our sins. Our sins are uh, washed away through the blood of Jesus Christ. It was Ananias who, who asked Saul, Saul of Tarsus in Acts 22. He said, what are you waiting for? Arise and be baptized and wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. That's something we should not put off. But there's a rainbow, a rainbow of support. I mean, look around tonight. Look around the room that we're in. As, as Christians, you, you and I are family. We're brothers and sisters in Christ. And one of the great things that we have is an amazing support system. So when we're down and out and struggling and need help, guess what? You can pick up the phone and you can call literally anyone uh, that's on the phone and address list here at the church. And they would be more than willing uh, to help you. But from that cloud of sorrow comes this cloud, uh, the, the rainbow of, of support. We know that God is always there. He cares for us. In fact, your Bible says in 1 Peter 5 and verse 7 that we are to cast all of our care upon him because he cares for you. Even if nobody else in your entire life cares for you, God does. God does. So we try to carry all of our burdens when there is someone who is willing to always, always help us. And so when we think about uh, this rainbow, it's important for us to, to realize that we're not going to have a rainbow without these storm clouds. Without the storms of life that come uh, our way. There is a rainbow in the clouds. And we can, we can look for that. Looking for uh, the very promises of God in our lives. Because they're powerful. They will guide us and lead us uh, through the storms. That rainbow is a wonderful symbol. A wonderful sign of God's uh, promises. One, one of God's promises that I really like for those uh, Christians who are faithful is, is uh, uh, the fact that we're going to wear a crown. And we're going to receive an eternal prize. Take a moment and go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. Please. 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 8. The great apostle Paul, near the end of his life, knowing he's about to be executed. 2 Timothy chapter 4 uh, beginning in verse number 8. He says, finally, there is laid up for me the, the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. He says, and not to me only, he says, but also to all who have loved his appearing. We want to wear that crown. We, we want to be uh, victorious. And that's another uh, promise of God, a rainbow that we have uh, to set our eyes on. And that is just out of the cloud of conflict and strife in life. 
is a crown of, of victory, a rainbow of, of victory. The death of Jesus Christ, the crucifixion of Christ on the cross, seemed to be one of the greatest tragedies in human history. But actually, God worked it for his ultimate victory, for his good, for our eternal good. In fact, in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 57, Paul said, But thanks be unto God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh yes, Jesus died on that cross for your sins, for my sins, for the sins of, of all of the world. But three days later, he rose victoriously over sin and death and, and hell itself. And he is victorious. And you and I can be and are more than conquerors uh, through, through him. What was it Paul wrote from prison? Philippians chapter 4 verse 13. You know this one as well, don't you? I can do... All things through Christ who strengthens me. Paul had the attitude that we need to have in life. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Because of the power that is within me. Finally tonight, think about the, the, the rainbow of our heavenly home. Of heaven, of heaven itself. It was said of Abraham in Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 10, He waited for the city which has foundations, whose builder and maker is God. We've always heard that heaven is a prepared place for prepared people. We've always heard that uh, you won't go to heaven on accident. It takes determination. It takes uh, fortitude and uh, resolve. I want to go to heaven, and I know I can only go to heaven God's way. And Jesus said in John 14 and verse 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. Heaven's being prepared, but are we preparing for heaven? Are we preparing for that uh, great place? It is a place where there, there will be uh, no more tears, no more pain, no more sorrow, no, no more death, no more of this physical stuff that we have to uh, deal with. So when we, when we think about uh, the rainbow in the clouds, there's just so much to remember and hold on to and be thankful for. But I think Paul uh, said it best, Romans chapter 8, verse 18, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. What we have to look forward to and what, what we have uh, being prepared for us is so much, much better than anything this old world or this old life could ever, ever afford us. So my challenge for all of us is simply to keep our eyes on the cross. To look for the rainbow. And to remember the, the promises that God has made for us. And be thankful for the, for the word of God. I believe sometimes we, we often, often neglect and, and fail to realize the power and the importance of, of the written word of God that we have to lead us and guide us, to instruct us, to equip us, to, to be active in all the good works that God would have us to be. Without this Bible, we wouldn't know how to be pleasing to God. We, we wouldn't know how to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. We, we wouldn't know how to be able to make heaven our eternal home as God so, so wants us to. Because when we come to the end of life, I believe we should all want to hear God say, Well done, good and faithful servant. Knowing if we don't hear that, what are we going to hear? Depart from me, I never knew you. So we want to make sure that we are ready for that eternal home. Because we're going to live in one of two places in eternity. It's either going to be heaven or it's going to be hell. What, what are we living for? What are we uh, longing for? It's heaven itself. Well, maybe tonight uh, we can be a source of encouragement. Maybe tonight as Christians we've made, maybe wandered away. Maybe the ways of the world and the cares of the world have caused us to stumble and fall. Maybe we need to uh, get back right with God and uh, get back right with one another. Maybe tonight you've never obeyed the gospel. And it's time to be obedient to that gospel plan of salvation tonight. If there's a way that we can help you, just come and let us know how as we stand and sing.
676. If there are any who are unable to partake of the Lord's Supper this morning, if you'd like to do so, as we sing this song, if you'd exit out the rear of the auditorium to your right in the library, you'll be served there. After this song, we'll be dismissed in prayer. There's within my heart a melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low.